Okay, we gotta be fast because the computer is overheating and we haven't even started yet here. I was starting, I was joking with myself, is it the art that is making this computer uh, just go nuts as far as the heat is concerned? Welcome back everyone, Artist Journal Friday, October 27th, 2023, broadcasting from inner space, uh, which looks like real life right now in Terramina, Sicily. My name is Adrian Pocabelli and welcome back and thank you once again for the overwhelming reaction. <laughs> I mean... I, people are like, you know, sometimes my friends ask me, is the, is the show taken away from your time to make art? And I go, well, not really. It's more actually uh, dealing with the social media after, and it's a blessing. It is an absolute blessing having spent 98% of my life, uh, you know, in obscurity to actually have people care and write to you and comment and retweet and everything as Yoain said yesterday it can make it means the world to a lot of us out here it's it's a thing you know it can be a thankless profession being an artist uh you know especially when you're obscure right so all to say this computer is literally let me just check here it, not too bad it is not too bad so We've been dancing around with mech's work here for a while. It seemed like just a matter of time uh, before it got the front page treatment on the newspaper of the imagination here. So here it is, uh, at last, the teasing is over. And what's interesting, we actually saw, I think this structure, but in another work, and we'll see it in a, actually a few tabs here, but now there's a figure, the princess. And at first I was like, you know, there's a princess up here too. I assume that's a princess, and at the top, and it kind of looks like someone that needs to be rescued, uh, but hard to say, uh, but almost giving this game a mission, perhaps, and these wonderful kind of columns here. I was in, you know, I went to the ancient Greek theater here, and Roman, it's kind of hilarious, actually. The Greeks built the theater here in Terramina, and I highly recommend you visit. Go in October. It's crowded now. In August and July, apparently it's insane and the weather is too hot. So go in like April or October. So it is a good time to be here. Um, but it's kind of hilarious just in passing here at the theater. The Greeks had it for drama and then the Romans started with drama when they took it over, but then they turned it into an arena with, uh, with the glad gladiators. So just, you know, we're kind of back to that war. It just kind of reminded me of that war theme. And again, it is just, you just want to say, as Freud was saying in Civilization and its discontents, it is almost biological. You know, organic matter coming apart and, com and, and, and coming together and coming apart, Eros and Thanatos. Anyways, we are off topic here, but not entirely, as I see these columns here, is reminding me of the Corinthian columns uh, at uh, Ian. Look at the sky here in uh, the theater there. So, uh, interesting horizontal lines here. I mean, I've said a lot about these already and it kind of looks like C here, but not entirely clear. Uh, you know, and then here it's ambiguous. I would argue this is C. If I had to, you know, if we're at St. Peter's Gate here and you had to say, how do you see this? I would, I would argue this is C up until here. And then up here, this looks like sky. Although it's a similar pattern, maybe inverted, actually, the dot kind of pattern at the very top here. Uh, this is the fun of the limitations, really, of this kind of stamp making process here. Uh, that is another way you could actually make this work. We, I've discussed screen printing, and we're gonna see a really cool screen print today of a digital work. It is happening. Uh, I was just, look at all the soldiers here too. Uh, screen printing would work, but in theory, if you were to make your own stamps, which actually would be quite a laborious and probably expensive process, theoretically, you could do it that way too. Uh, in a sense, that's what we have here, are kind of stamps of sorts. Look at the soldiers. And I brought up actually some Vittore uh, Carpaccio, if I'm pronouncing the first name right. So I brought up some Carpaccio today because that's actually, for those of you that know your Carpaccio and for those that don't, we're gonna take a look in a second. There is something about this I think it's the small figures, the large landscape, and kind of this almost classical architecture 
that reminded me of those massive works that I saw way back in 2004 at the Academia in Venice, which I highly recommend. The images online don't do it justice, but it kind of reminded me of a Carpaccio in its own way, this massive drama with like, you know, 200 figures in it. And here you almost see what looks like two different armies facing off against each other. Uh, and here you see, you know, hard to say, but we'll just call it the princess figure. Uh, interesting kind of blood, uh, blood red, and this negative space here, uh, just gorgeous. So beautiful work by mech.txt. There's a quote here, thus the country is abandoned to itself. May my father know it. The enemy inflicted much damage upon us. Now, I think there is a well, we have the title here. This isn't the title. Amurapi's letters were covered. Amurapi's letter was covered in blood. And interesting videos here. Kind of reminds me, actually, like this is just like a work in progress video. But just from an aesthetic perspective, it kind of reminded me a little bit. That's a cool kind of troll like figure. And you almost see a shield on these guys. Kind of reminded me of uh, Ed Marola's The Artist is Dreaming. This kind of like. I find this, this isn't, you know, the work itself. This is just kind of showcasing the work as far as I understand Mech's doing here. But it does make you think, as you see it kind of scroll from left to right here, you could theoretically pull an Ed Marola on this work as well, which I just find kind of interesting uh, in itself. And here's just another work in progress shot. And you do pick up little details that you might not notice uh, when you see these shots here, as you see. Uh, you got to love the stone. There's something about this kind of MS-DOS style, you know, RPG style uh, that really goes well with like classism. Look at that big blood red negative space. Uh, the work's in progress. Fascinating. And we this is the work we saw. I think we saw this yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. You'll notice there's no princess here. So maybe reusing elements, maybe extending the canvas, maybe just a completely different uh, composition but maybe reusing the building. Remember we were talking about uh, dragging layers across compositions. Like I think this is, you know, it's accepting the logic of digital art is uh, where I'm going with that. And did we see this one? I don't think so. So again, and this floor, this almost tiling. Uh, so the work in progress shots are interesting too, uh, because you also see different kind of variations on the piece, right? different outcomes that were possible and even the like light red and the dark red all to say it's all extremely beautiful here's Vittore Carpaccio I think I got the first name right we'll just call it Carpaccio uh, this awesome artist this is a crop but you kind of see where I'm going with this you see the big landscape and then there's a whole bunch of tiny people here and we're gonna see different crops this is a crop of a painting uh, but you see the landscape the little trees uh, and then kind of like this big, I guess this would be like a medieval castle, but almost kind of has this, you know, pseudo classical look, shall we say. Uh, here's a bigger version. This is actually the same work. And actually you see the sea here. And again, the internet does not do uh, Carpaccio justice at all. Uh, you know, I was looking for uh, just, I put in massive Carpaccio and I didn't really get what I was looking for, but you see how there's like hun what look like hundreds of figures and again, you see landscape, trees, classical, well, medieval, we'll just call it architectural, you know, kind of castle structures. Uh, and there are some Carpaccios. This is a close up as well. Again, if you just kind of like zoom out and look, it's kind of got a mech.txt composition to it, which is kind of what I wanted to just compare it to in a very kind of, uh, why, why not? In a very gratuitous way here. Uh, here's another Carpaccio show as well. And again, you kind of see a similar thing going on, don't you? And I just thought that was kind of fun and interesting. And this was also kind of fun and interesting, maybe a little gratuitous, but I thought let's, because this was the next thought in my head is Carpaccio. Well, of course, Max Ernst loved Carpaccio. And this is a beautiful two page uh, spread from Max Ernst Beyond Painting, which you can get on archive.org. You can just set up an account, log in with Google, and you can take this out for like an hour at a time, interestingly. And on the right, you see uh, Max Ernst's favorite painters and Max Ernst's favorite writers. And I brought this up maybe 200 episodes ago. This is a very important document, I would argue. 
in terms of understanding surrealism and how surrealism understood the tradition and, and what it was kind of gathering from the tradition. And I thought, and so here, here's Carpaccio, okay? And it's quite interesting, the other people that you see here that were Max, Max Ernst made this uh, work here, by the way. And you see Bruegel, uh, Bellini, uh, Hieronymus Bosch, Grunewald, a German painter. I don't know Altdorfer, I'll have to look that up. Piero della Francesca, right? Uh, Lucas Cranach. I can't read that uh, here. Uh, Tura, I'm not sure. Crivelli, I think, was a Renaissance painter. Of course, Leonardo da Vinci, De Chirico, Henri Rousseau, Cosa, not sure, Cosimo, interesting, and M. Deutsch and Van Gogh, right? And here we see Jacqui in the writers, Baudelaire, Edgar Allan Poe, Whitman, uh, Crabbe, L'Autre Amant, of course, and Rimbaud, and Goethe, Shakespeare, Carol. You know, just on this whole topic, as I make several associations here, uh, as we pursue, you know, uh, destinations unknown here, Goethe uh, was actually in Teermina here uh, doing the grand tour and actually was at that ancient Greek theater. So it's actually worth a visit, uh, by the way. It was part of the grand tour that a lot of 18th century, uh, you know, artists and writers would do, intellectuals, as part of their education. Uh, you know, their classics education, Shakespeare, Lewis Carroll, Samuel Taylor, Coleridge, you know, Novalis, who I know the name, but I've never read, Hain and Solomon, never read, William Blake, and Browning, I think, is a poet, Apollinaire. So all to say, uh, just an interesting document that, you know, is worth kind of, you know, and I just wanted to, sh you know, isn't it interesting how Carpaccio is there in Ernst's uh, influences? And as I kind of pursue this irrational, this, this, this logic of this, this thread here, uh, this was also kind of a quality, uh, just to do a little detour into surrealist, uh, you know, uh, surrealism. Uh, Alfred Jarry was a proto-surrealist, and one of the things he liked to do, or that, that it's kind of like a surrealist thing a little bit, was making these lists of your favorites. So we saw that with Ernst there. And here, this is Dr. Fostrel, which I think is from 19... 04, if I had to hazard a guess. And here we see the main character, Dr. Fostrel, Pataphysician, uh, by Alfred Jarry, this uh, book here. And what you see here, you see that? Baudelaire, Edgar Allan Poe translations. You're starting to connect the dots here. It's kind of a little sojourn into surrealism, courtesy of Mech.txt and Carpaccio today. Uh, Bergerac. The Gospel According to St. Luke in Greek, uh, Coleridge, start, start to see kind of, you know, repetitions here of, you know, Grabba, I think was listed, Olotreamon, the Lays or the Songs of Maldoror, Malarmé, the Odyssey by Homer, Rabelais, Rimbaud, Ubuhua. <laughs> so he puts himself in there. <laughs> I've never noticed that before. Jules Verne and, and you know, so Verlaine, of course, so just very interesting and kind of a difficult book to read, but a classic, Exploits and Opinions of Dr. Foster, Pataphysician. So there's our uh, interesting intro here today. Mikey Wilson, a uh, big shout out. Uh, you know, it got me thinking as far as portraiture, uh, it kind of achieved what you're going for with portraiture, make them a little better looking, a little better dressed, a little nicer sunglasses, and the hair is just a little bit tighter. This is kind of what you want out of a portrait, I was thinking. And so let me make that large here. So a gorgeous, uh, thank you, a gorgeous painting here by Mikey Wilson, thank you. I, you know, I was like, maybe I should actually shave like that. Maybe I should actually dress like that. I wrote in a comment, uh, you know, I wanna go shopping with Mikey because he seems to know what to do. <laughs> he seems to know what to do. Uh, Captain Pokebelly, this is a heartfelt tribute to the captain of the pirate ship of the high seas of the imagination, Adrian Pokebelly. So, uh, you know, if this was the last day I was alive, this is what I'd be doing right now, Mikey. Uh, so you thank you, and it means a lot, and thank you for sending me one, and uh, much appreciated. I, I, yeah, I, it's beautiful, by the way. Uh, and thank you also uh, to Chepkeys, who picked up a couple of works here, TB303, uh, part of the pixel art sketchbook, and uh, Sybil, 
uh, one of the AI artworks, and I need to post a few more. I might do them as one of ones and just make them cheap. Uh, we shall see. Uh, editions of 15, yeah. So thank you, Chepkeys, for picking this up. This is Sybil. I have a few more in that series. We'll see what I do with it. Uh, comments uh, from yesterday, and again, thank you for all the comments here. I love the new format. The image looks interesting. A big hug, so from Leprochant. So the format here, if you mean like the background here, as you can see the, you know, you know what's kind of crazy? If I can get the, uh, I guess you can't really see it, but on the right of the, like over the shoulder here, you can actually see Calabria, which is the toe of the boot. So all of a sudden everything, the, I look at the map and I go, that's Italy. I'm in Sicily now, of course, that's part of Italy, but you can actually see right there, I, I think, actually that's, no, that's Sicily, but if you keep going to the right or the other direction there, uh, you see Calabria, and it kind of puts things in perspective. Anyways, uh, very temporary, the new format here, and uh, next show will be a new place, but I think there's a good view there too. It's kind of the first thing I look for on Airbnb. Santiago is a codal who will be on uh, next Wednesday's Spaces. There's been a lot of confusion about what curation is and what is the role of a curator. Many think it has to do with promotion and art discovery market-wise, but it's actually a job that conveys deeper work and study. You know, this is actually a really interesting point, and this came up, oh, this came up, uh, this came up uh, actually in an earlier episode here, which is uh, curation, the word, I think it means like take the people who take care of, you know, so, you know, sometimes it's nice. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what Santiago is getting at is this is a whole kind of art and science and a lot of people call themselves curators and I understand it. I even say, hey, this is card, part of a curator, uh, kind of a curation of sorts. And that's probably true, but I have a feeling the specialists of curating, uh, they might listen to that and go, well, kind of, right? So, yeah, I agree. It's a very interesting topic to address. And uh, yes, uh, you know, you know what we'll do when we have a little, few, a little less heated computer and a little more time is we'll go to ChatGPT and we'll start querying ChatGPT here on what curatorship actually is and see if we get some clues, at least from ChatGPT. Uh, also, the Void Traders composition is a clear reference to the Star Fox game. So referring to figments there. Uh, also known as Capin. And Godot is an open, the software that uh, mech.txt was using, uh, is an open source game engine. Recently it got a, a lot of new users as a result of Unity's terrible decisions. There's all, you know, all these companies are all trying to make more and more and more and more money. And they oftentimes in the process make terrible decisions. I assume that's what happened here. Uh, kind of almost like what Blender is for 3D design. Godot tries to be for game development. So they're making it open source. This, you know, open source may really have its day. Like for compressing videos here, I use Handbrake. It's open source and it looks like it's the best software and it's free. And, you know, it makes you wonder in the future, I could see open source having its day. Uh, I'm starting to watch, but I'll leave my congratulations so as not to forget. Thank you, Silieri and Rada. Always a delight to hear from you. So thank you, everybody. And also just on Twitter here, I mean, this is actually at 15,000 now, uh, it, I think. I, I, thank you for the incredible support here. Uh, kind of mind-blowing, actually. Martin Joe, GM, an amazing show as always. Thank you. And Authentic Waffles, also known as Hisdrubal Waffle, uh, discussing the Nintendo 64. Uh, thanks, Pokebelly. It is indeed N64. In Japan, there was a suite of Nishimen Mario artist games, including Paint and Polygon Studio, which I have never heard of. 3D, but they were never released domestically, so it's all in Japanese, and I have to make many notes. Also happy to see Mo get featured. Mo is rad, absolutely. And yeah, I was saying, you know, Maybe Mo should have a little more time on the show, considering Mo has just been pumping out work for months here uh, consistently, and that in itself is a kind of credibility, we might say, in at least in my universe. And so, look at this. I was almost joking with uh, his Drubal here. It's almost like a prepared piano when you don't know what the things do. You know, uh, referring to John Cage with the rubber bands and the, you know, erasers that create, and you don't when you 
press the button or the key on the on the piano, you don't know what it's going to do. It's almost like that, doing it in Japanese. Also, Stalamir, uh, this is great. I'm amazed how you interpret it as language of light. It really is, referring to negotiation yesterday. And the light itself will be even more important in my alien works in the future. So absolutely, that is so cool. Uh, glad you like the interpretation. Glyph Punks, great show. Thank you. Yo in. You're awesome, my friend. Always thankful to you to take your time to do these videos and to feature my works. Absolute pleasure, Yoa Ian. Off the charts, interesting, beautiful AI art. Uh, Pixel Lord, thank you for the comment. I was trying to catch the first one of Sabato for 777 Tez, but no luck. So we're going to look at that in a second here. Anyways, found all those amazing drops on Object One. Thanks for spreading the word. And ex thank you, Negar. Thank you, uh, Clown Vamp. Uh, look at, and actually, this is the... Look at that background too. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and so I posted this. This is actually the theater I was discussing uh, here, and that's actually Mount Etna in the background. I think Europe's biggest active volcano. I took the tour, which I actually I highly recommend if you go. I mean, pretty stunning. Uh, you know, and then there's you can kind of stand right there. And you can look through and you'll see the volcano. It's also, and this just kind of randomly got uh, destroyed by an earthquake here. So just very interesting. And thank you, everybody. B, uh, I enjoy watching this show a lot. The subject of curation and decentralization needs to be more broadly discussed. So noted. As we progress in the use of newly developed tools and away from just using them to solve old problems with old strategies, you know, this also came up, didn't it? that maybe, I mean, it was uh, Skamra. And actually, I thought on, uh, Skamra actually also put out a comment there on YouTube. Uh, maybe I need to reload this, because I just saw it this morning. But to your point, B, uh, this uh, curation discussion uh, needs to... Here, let's just... Also, just this kind of adds also to the uh, to the curation idea. So, okay, so we need to tackle the curation idea absolutely, and we were discussing that earlier uh, with Santiago is a codal, I believe. Uh, you know, bring up ChatGPT. Let's actually revisit that and discuss it. Also, Skamra had an interesting comment here this morning. Thanks for showing two of my works. I think you mentioned it here. Having just a little bit of feedback can be really motivating. Did you see Cosmo's Emerging Artist thread, which included Eitzo, which is awesome. I think this is great. Milaya, I'm not sure I remember Milaya, and other great artists. I have really given it much thought, but I'm curious if you have any thoughts on some of the bigger names starting to collect emerging artists. There are other things, there, there are others doing this too, I think. Maybe it's just a sign of maturation of the space, but I think it points to different collecting dynamic than the one we saw during the bull. And I also think it's just a matter of uh, time is setting in the ultimate judge. Uh, and I mean, how? what else is there to say on it? I, I think, and just good work, you put it this way. I think David Hickey, a renowned art historian uh, out of Texas who has passed on in the last three or four years, I mentioned this like 150 episodes ago, I think, had this great quote uh, when I saw him at the LA Art Fair in like 2012. And he gave a talk, and he, talking about Rauschenberg, undeniable is undenied. And I, this is why, you know, I think we can, you know, Aitso, who I know right away, you know, there's something just about a great work will eventually be recognized. And in a sense, it doesn't matter how much is spent on a work. Uh, you, you can spend a lot of money on work that doesn't stand the test of time, and you can spend, you know, two Tezos on a work that will. So ultimately, this just kind of brings back this whole notion that time is the judge, and I think that's what's going on here. That's my interpretation, is these names have, you know, at least Aitso has been around now for six months at least, and people, you know, it's not, what's beautiful about this scene is it's not too big. So you can actually, you know, all of a sudden be collected by Cosimo, you know, probably the most uh, renowned collector in the space. And uh, that's still possible if you were to even start today. So uh, if you're putting out, undeniable is undenied, as Hickey, as David Hickey says. Uh, okay. And this was also, I, 
I would be remiss not to mention Ripcash. Thank you, Pokebelly, for highlighting my power source Bitcoin ordinal inscriptions on yesterday's Artist Journal. I'm not going to say what time they're featured because I really think it's worth watching these journals from start to finish. So big shout out and thank you, Ripcash. As I said in the reply, after the show, the word that came to me about these kind of very small works that are kind of, you know, just designed for minting, like we see also with Spiegel's Maskinen, uh, it's elegant. It's just really elegant. That aesthetic quality from a low file size for minting, you know, directly on chain, say with ordinals or ETH, it's elegant. Like there's an elegance there uh, to make something beautiful, but a small file size. So thank you, uh, Ripgash, uh, for the shout out. Appreciate it. Uh, Rosatio. Uh, thank you, for Pokebelly, for highlighting my work. Yes, the beauty of digital art is I just simply hit Command-J on Photoshop in order to duplicate the layers. Again, accepting the logic of digital art. Uh, also in my work, I use the public domain images that I steal, quote-unquote, combined with digital drawing and or digital elements that I create. So combining uh, these, you know, uh, copies, copied layers with original drawing, the eyes that you pointed, I created them myself. I used to use eye pictures from old encyclopedias and such. That's cool. But I wasn't satisfied with how they turned out, so I created one myself. I hope this helps. Indeed. Thank you for the comment, Rosacho. It's always, again, awesome to hear from the artists. Uh, so this is a work that was sent to me, and I, we can't read the whole thing, but I, interesting comment here from Louis on monetize your imagination today. So... Uh, basically, I don't, you can find it in my collection or if you go to Louis's uh, feed here, Louis sent me one and I didn't want to put it this way. I could have just glossed over this, but I didn't want to uh, feel like I was avoiding uh, the topic either. Uh, when I went to art school, basically you did it because you were compelled to is what Louis is saying here. Uh, you know, that ultimately it was an uh, endeavor of the soul worth way more than money or anything material. Times have changed though, debatable. The world is driven by need and greed. Truth and integrity are drowned out by social, political, and corporate propaganda. Well, maybe that is somewhat true, uh, but it's always been a mess out there. Uh, self is no longer something to investigate. I'd say a little pessimistic here, though art practice and exploration with some generous hedonism mixed in, of course, self is something that gets misdirected and manipulated by the powers that be. Conformity, conformity is not just expected, it is required. Well, you know, I would argue, argue at least this show, uh, but there's no actually, I mean, other than the minting on Zora, there is actually no financial uh, outcome, at least not yet. Um, conformity is not... I. But, the, yeah, okay, continuing on. Being an artist in these times especially is harder than ever. Monetize your imagination, they tell us. Make your art for business. Follow trends. Create to succeed. I mean, for me, this is actually, I mean, it sounds crass when it's said monetize your imagination, but uh, this is the dream <laughs> that you can, I mean, back to Terrence McKenna. He called it capitalism made of light, you know, and this is the dream. I mean, if, if we do need to have jobs, if we do need to, if we are in an economic world uh, where we do have to make some money, I can't think of a more beautiful way to make money. I mean, we, I guess we could work at the cafe, uh, but I'd much rather, you know, make money from my imagination. So I guess I'm not quite so pessimistic on that. In fact, I'm probably the opposite, but I think it's interesting and all sides, I think, should be shared here. If you wish to take that route, that is fine, no judgment, but you'll be missing out on the most essential and rewarding part of being an artist, artistic integrity. And so here, just finally, uh, I think you can have both, in my opinion. I Like this whole idea that the artist needs to be poor, the starving artist is the only authentic kind of art. It's a romantic kind of, capital R romantic kind of view, I would argue, and I, it's a, and you know, the problem from just a general perspective, almost from a style perspective, is it's a little over sentimental. I dare say, uh, you know, this idea that, you know, you have, to, if you're not authentic if you're making money. But I agree with, but you know, I'm kind of out of the Warhol school of business art, you know, like good art is business art. It's, it's a great, 
I, as a des this being true of how desperate of a situation and that you're expected basically to be poor, it's all the more glorious to actually be able to like make a living like the person across the street from you, from your imagination. I mean, that's glorious in a sense. Uh, so all to say, but I appreciate the thought and thank you for the work. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think you're alone in thinking this either, which is why I share it. And back to the subject here, uh, as we run through, I can't believe 30 minutes here. I'm going to go a little faster here. Uh, the Great Onion of Capitalism looks on at the Art Week bustle. So that is what that is, hilariously. The Great Onion of Capitalism. So just to riff off of the last uh, tab there, speaking of which, Sabato's work is now at 930 Tezos. Let me just, hopefully I don't, uh, okay, here we go. We'll get the latest 930 Tezos. Uh, mental noise at 100, and te 100 Tezos. Negotiations is at 333. Lex Doom at 250. So these are all selling. A Narrator, 230. Uh, Blue Retina, 150. This stuff's doing really well. I mean, 200 Tezos only, though, one could argue, uh, for a one of one popple. Hacking the Trading Booth and Merchant of the Soul, 123. And also Muji at 300 Tezos. And the others waiting for a bid. So. Uh, kind of funny how the, the, the Art Week one and the, almost the capitalist critique is at the top of the charts there, financially speaking. Uh, zooming through here, uh, let me just check the computer. It's hot. Uh, RuneTune with some great reporting, and I follow RuneTune. That is a X uh, bug, by the way. Went to the opening. How cool is this? So these are the physical works of, of course, Lily Illo, whose work we recognize here. And look at this excellent documentation here, getting really almost the scoop here from RuneTune. And, you know, again, uh, just very interesting to see these works up close, right? So just fascinating. Uh, you know, originally painted by a robot. And we have some more, I think. Uh, let me just actually back up one. Uh, okay, let's go here and here. I guess this was at the opening. You can see the, right? So we were actually discussing this yesterday, how it's almost like the texture is done first and then afterwards it's almost colored and I can understand that. Uh, it's probably just the, that's the, I suspect this is the 1.0 of the technology. Uh, in, very interesting, also Danielle King. And you see like a big robot. That looks like the thing in the Sabato uh, painting. Maybe that was the reference. And here we see more of these works here from the show. And you see the opening. So all very interesting and cool. And here's strange thing. I was incredibly curious to see how these would turn out. And here are some other ones, different kinds of texture. Uh, and. I would love to see these up close. Uh, this was the closest I could get here to the strange things, but you know, even it's interesting how well done the square is. And again, it makes me wonder, like, is this almost like you do the texture first with a brush and then almost inkjet over top, you know, I, or, or some equivalent of a spray over top? Because this is quite precise for a brush, isn't it? Uh, so in, in the spirit of, uh, healthy conversations here. Lorna Mills showing skepticism to the robots. Uh, robots are not so great painters. Interesting. So uh, I think this is really interesting. And I think it just should be a part of the conversation as I go on and on celebrating this kind of what I feel is kind of a new, new kind of mark making is what I'm calling it. But I think this is actually, you know, a sober you know, it's a, I think it's a good reminder that maybe as we see this new technology and the, sh the sparkle and the shine to remain, remain skeptical and go, well, is this, how beautiful is this? And just to keep that in the back of our heads. So uh, always appreciated from the often provocative uh, Lorna Mills, Rip Cash, Rust Silkscreen. So going toward in a silkscreen, uh, making a physical here from Rip Cash, and I actually brought this up large, and you see the gorgeous dithering here. Uh, so let me just see if I can, and there it is. It almost looks like it's maybe on aluminum 
or something, but you see how beautiful that is. And I was just thinking to myself here, you know, the digital art world or the scene that we're kind of a part of, I think it could actually, like, think of how many of these uh, Rip Cash could make, and then you could change the color and everything. Like, digital art, because you can do so many remixes and everything, and then once you translate that into physical art, like, the volume of art that could be produced by the digital art world could overwhelm, not to make an unnecessary distinction between digital art and the contemporary art world, but you could actually probably, you know, the digital art scene could probably out-volume, put out more work than the contemporary art world at a certain point, physically, just by nature of, you know, so I just kind of an interesting thought, because uh, quantity in, you know, as they say, quantity in like big enough sizes has a quality of its own. Finally, on the news front, before we get into the art, uh, Zora, embed, earn ETH, embed a Zora Mint page onto your website or platform, earn Mint referral rewards. So, Look at this. So Zora, with another innovation. First, it was, uh, you know, mint for the fee and then split the free fee with the creator. And then it was mint for free. And now they're doing embedded on your website. And then when you click the link that you embed, you get a cut. So they're really, I think, what makes Zora so powerful, I think, is this idea they're sharing the most, it seems to me. Uh, and uh, that's just, it's sort of, you know, it's kind of a Walmart model, shall we say, I dare say, in, a, in the sense of, it's kind of a logic of why pay more. Uh, the more you give the customer or the user, the more likely you are to actually succeed. So I just find very provocative and interesting from a business perspective into the art a fantastic work uh, by Martin Brook. I could have started the show with this. We just did last week. So I was like, okay, uh, we just started with Martin. But Agua, Italian luxury sports car manufacturer, 900 by 700, one of one, 350 Tezos. I just think this is gorgeous. I'm so happy to have discovered Martin's work here. And again, a fusion of what looks like collage, maybe photography and video unifying the whole thing, almost the noise of video, video noise uh, unifying the image or the collage or whatever this gorgeous thing is with the super subtle colors by Martin Brook. Beautiful work, 350 Tezos. Another very interesting experimental artist here, Kazuhiro Ehara. And let's see if there's, I don't think there is any volume here, but uh, just another very interesting, I'd argue provocative digital painting here. Uh, and I believe Kazuhiro Ehara is out of uh, Tokyo, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and here it's moving. There we go. So, again, you could argue kind of similar to Martin Brook in the sense of maybe mixing video a little bit with painting, perhaps. You know, kind of an amalgam of the two. Kind of a moving painting, perhaps. Francoise Gamma. If interested, I will mint it. And this looks super cool here with what almost looks like Apple IIe kind of programming. I remember this. Syntax error, list, and then 10, 20. This looks like basic. Uh, that's probably the only programming language I ever really kind of looked at. And I, I got lost by line 20 here when I was trying to learn at age six. Um, but I love this and I love the old programming ready and then you hit run. Very cool work here. And here's another one by Francoise Gamma, Amstrad Patterns Code, Tomorrow Mint. So combining uh, programming and code with image. So a fusion of text and image. And also, I mean, it brings you to this kind of uh, reality as information, as I think a lot of quantum physics people would say, a kind of, you could argue, there is almost a kind of a, uh, quantum physics side to this whole idea of, you know, programming matter, which I think people think you can do in 100 years or 200 years if they can't do it already, but, you know, at enormous energy. But this idea that this is the direction we seem to be going, uh, which is uh, programming matter. And I feel like this is like an almost like the artists intimating or anticipating almost like the prophetic 
you know, are, you know, where it's like it's not possible scientifically, let's say yet, but artistically we can start to visualize what that means. So, uh, very cool work here, and that'll be minted by uh, Francoise Gamma tomorrow. New work by Renke, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, nice, just combination, just cool abstract here. A nice piece from Renke, edition of ten. And are any listed yet? No. So that is on object. Uh, Sean Luke with a cool kind of UFO aquatic assembly. I think they're UFOs. Let's see. Let's take a closer look. And I think this is on uh, object here. You can see almost maybe it's the water in the background in the blue and pink kind of almost neon. That is the water as well as kind of like the reflection looking uh, frame there. Uh, cool work from... Uh, Sean Luke. And here you probably recognize the artist Gogo Lightus uh, with a super cool work. Let me just get the title, What Makes My Heart Beat. And this had a really nice write up. In a figurative sense, my heart beats for many things, both personal and universal, but in a literal sense, it is powered by something simple and essential electricity. So, very cool. And of course, Gogo Lightus is quite philosophical. If you check out the Twitter space I did, me and Runtoon did, uh, with uh, Gogolitis, I think it was in February, he was mentioning how reality simulator, simulator device is really his kind of response to Plato's cave in a digital world. And that is well worth the listen. That is up on the Spotify. It's also on the YouTube. Cool work, hey? I mean, before we move on, uh, the hearts here and almost a little bit of animation here going across. Interesting contrast here with this kind of animated hearts with the super geometric linear, uh, you know, perpendicular circuitry. And then you have this kind of free flowing animated, you know, hearts here. Almost looks like a currency. <laughs> the currency of love, courtesy of Gogolitis. And here we have Tom Bombadil, meteor shower. And that looks like the big uh, statue in Brazil in Rio de Janeiro, if I'm not mistaken. You know, one of my favorite parts of this work is the gray clouds uh, in the background. Not white, but gray, maybe even beige. And then also the composition here of this uh, kind of looking outside from a cave. And this doesn't look like, it looks like a reference, or maybe it's even a medieval figure, not the Jesus that's in Rio. I think that's a Jesus in Rio. So it looks like a, but maybe a distant relative there. Iconographically speaking, Gordon Zuckold, another pan with some nice volume here too. I hesitate to move this mic, but I will. There we go. So beautiful pixel art here. I think it's, yeah, pixel art. Nice monochromatic for the most part. Minimal color palette, let's put it that way. Cool music. Almost classical. And the cat's sleeping. Hilarious, fun, beautiful, now, right? I mean, this is art that a lot of, you know, people under 15 would probably relate to, which is quite interesting. Uh, continuing on, Daenerys. Remember Daenerys did that incredible uh, work of, the, it kind of looked like Doom? Well, here is a new work. Daenerys has been posting, I think, a few works on Zora here, Sharp Tongues, and I actually brought it up bigger. This is going for 0 0.02 ETH. And let me just make sure, and let's see if we can get that. There we go. And so there is, it is, and some skulls that are kind of stretched out, uh, kind of orange and a blue flame, and then some interesting kind of blue, almost video, one-bit pixelation of sorts there. So interesting piece, kind of has a video game feel to it, doesn't it? Speaking of which, McRenders with some really nice, what looks like Donkey Kong. Uh, don't pull the cartridge 08. Uh, I believe uh, McRenders sent this to me. I saw that actually after I had already chosen this for the show, by the way, but either way, uh, full transparency. Let's just see if, yes, indeed was sent. To oh no, I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. Okay, so there we go. I bought it after seeing it. Uh, so there it is. So just, you know, it's, it's quite a nice glitch is I guess where I'm going with this. It's quite a nice glitch. This part here, 
it's like a nice little mini film. Uh, and the numbers, Donkey Kong Jr. math. So almost kind of reminiscent, interestingly, accidentally perhaps, to that Francois Gamma with the programming, you know, combining uh, letters. I'm a big fan of that, actually. Like in the Peloponnesian War series that I did, I purposefully was trying to, you know, is the war of all iconography against all iconography. And one of the things I was trying to do was to go from shapes to letters to shapes where almost, where it became about reading, right? Read And are you reading this as an image or are you reading this as language? And then trying to kind of mix them up. And so I'm always a big fan of this juxtaposition of language and image. And that was a nice example. And here, Uxine, with what seems like a kind of satirical work of the Uxine character playing Super Mario here. And, you know, Uxine's humor, again, I thought this was great and hilarious and just ever creative here. Uh, just put on Twitter, just kind of hilarious. And here's another uh, glitch ROM, Silva Santus. This is a really cool one, horse racing too. Uh, so nice selection here. Selection is paramount. Uh, just checking the heat on the computer here. This is gorgeous, isn't it? Very nice. Again, the racing games often work out particularly well. Edition of 22 for two Tezos 20. There are five left. Nice glitch. Uh, of course, Pamelo Cerrone, an explainer gallery with a really nice piece here. Uh, one of the most prolific artists on the blockchain right now and outside the blockchain. Remember that gorgeous show we saw with almost those Duchamp, Duchamp-like uh, uh, bicycle wheels that were had the cards on them that were played the GIF. Brilliant. Pamela Cerrone uh, and the music. I mean, and all of this and making music. So totally on fire, I believe out of Argentina. Just an awesome artist. Uh, so another cool work to add to the collection. Uh, this is pretty cool. This was Rob from Foundation. I saw uh, post this in... Uh, you know, speaking of curators, uh, and this was often puts out uh, some of the highlights from Foundation. Racing Towards a New Day, this is by Hachimi, who I feel like we may have seen before, but not for a long time. Again, the, the panning. Like, this panning idea, I think, is really interesting. Simple idea, but pretty effective. That cool DVD. Almost like the retro tech of the DVD. GM. See that? GM. Uh, cool piece. Cool piece. And has that sold? Just minted uh, today. So fresh. Uh, Santiago with another beautiful uh, work here. This one a little bit more painterly. Trying to figure out which artist this kind of reminded me of. It's almost like a, I want to say like early Paul Clay or something uh, in here. Kind of nice and painterly. Again, a work like this is crying out to be painted by uh, Art Matter, isn't it? So uh, just a really cool painting here by Santiago. Massive, 10,000 pixels. And this is an edition of 20 for five Tezos. Uh, very cool. This Daniel King has uh, is doing the FX hash, I think just like uh, temporarily here, just kind of special guest. These works here, I had never seen before, at least not for a while, I Shadow Roses. I think these are beautiful. Uh, interesting kind of digital take on roses. I thought were really worth highlighting here. And it looks like uh, kind of a generative art. I just think quite brilliant. And so nice selection from Daniel King there. A Tez Noun by Rinny Fish. Let me just see if there's volume. Uh, no volume here. Let's, let me just see. There we go. Oh, yeah, there is. My computer might be in slow-mo. I may have to. So check that out. At auction for only 30 Tezos right now. My computer may be overheating here. Uh, so we may have to just run through the rest of this. I'm starting to sweat in this oven of a place here. Uh, okay, TMI, uh, Bazaya, greetings from Nepal. Nepal, so another maybe a non-figure. Uh, look at these great tattoos. Makes you think that Bazaya could be almost like a tattoo consultant. What kind of tattoos should I get? 
and you could talk to Baziah here. Uh, almost a nice portfolio for that. Interesting background here. And again, greetings from Nepal. So interesting piece and rustic. Don't forget to brush them. So playing again with this kind of, we're back to this programming code as, as image, right? I mean, it's interesting to see how this is recurring here. And uh, perhaps a reference here clearly to Dali's uh, Mae West, but turning the eyes into mouths, which I think Dali would appreciate. So very cool here and some interesting kind of a landscape here. Uh, Flora Marquez with a beautiful work here. Love uh, kind of remember all those one of ones Flora did for like 30 Tezos. There's probably some still available on the graph paper, erasing all of that practice and then puts out what I'd call a sketchbook work here. It's gorgeous. This gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Uh, not sure if it was burned. DB001, there may be a newer version. Uh, check her feed. Anaerobic second childhood. So Turkarak with the brutal uh, satires of society here. And here you have, you know, some elderly people going back to their youth and being in the band, you know, holding on to youth. Uh, so I think, you know, just brilliant Turkarak work here. Anaerobics. I'm not sure what anaerobic is. I'm sure someone out there does. And there's the old guy. So yeah, it's always kind of raw and brutal with Turkarak, but that's what makes it great. Uh, just like brutal satire. Tornado Rodriguez with a cool pastiche of, I think maybe the Tornado Rodriguez figure here, uh, playing Scrooge McDuck. So a cool kind of pastiche here from Tornado Rodriguez, just posted on X. Timothy Julien at Oasis. Interesting uh, reflection here. And is that a pool? One wonders. So continuing with this kind of architectural experimentation, cool title, only 70, 49 cents if you can spare, if you can spare a dime. Uh, here's Atelier 407, uh, Happy Days. So I think Atelier, we were kind of showcasing or mentioning that there was a series Atelier was putting out. I, I think she, she was saying how the bots got it and got them all. And now, so feeling better today. So just show some Atelier work. Here's a beautiful one by Atelier 407, density number 10, uh, Dex uh, posted here. So just a really cool artist. I think I discovered in Lewis Osborne's collection. Continuing on, Bedala. Uh, let's just make that big. So I was never sure if these were AI. I don't think they are, even though they kind of look like AI, but I don't think they are. Uh, just cool illustrations here. Uh, so quite interesting. Uh, edition of 10, I think this is sold out at 10 Tezos each. So nice sale here from Badala. And here's Photographic and Illustrator, Badala NFT. So we looked at Badala's work, I think six months ago or so. So interesting to see the work back. Look at the Kurt Hustle Collective. Maybe this is why my computer's overheating. Uh, Cheeks AR, leave your life for a better one. Augmented reality Cheeks, so kind of cryptic here from the Great Kurt Hustle Collective, edition of 25 for three Tezos each. Lorna Mills, with a happy face, erstwhile the happy will be happiest. So having fun here too, with a nice big happy face on a flag. And so cool work. And again, Lorna Mills should be on the spaces in a couple of weeks, I think the November 15th, I think it is. And if everything goes according to plan. And so we can discuss also the robot painting then. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Version uh, with a new work here. And I like how they're getting more complex here. Uh, this kind of simple idea here of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, the rectangle structure here. And you can kind of see this almost uh, going through a tunnel of sorts, but then inside, they're getting more complex is what I'm trying to say. So Fuchsia Oscillate by Dr. Version. Let me just see. I was just losing my cursor there. One left at 10 Tezos, uh, just minted. Uh, Sky Goodman and Eitso. So remember, I was showing you the Eitso here. Hopefully this plays. My computer may be frying. Uh, so it's too bad because this is a beautiful video. Here it is. So remember the Polaroid I was showing yesterday by Eitso? I think it's based from a screenshot from this. Traveling through the mediums. Very cool collab here. Uh, very, very cool uh, portrait here. Speaking of portraits, this is kind of funny. So there seemed to be a portrait contest here for Santiago, also known as Neymar, Neymarquez. 
I don't know what the Neymark is friend contest contest is, but here's my entry. So there is Santiago, courtesy of Skamra. Very cool. And here is another one, courtesy of Shilly Preston, who I do follow, by the way. That is a Twitter bug. Uh, this is my entry to make a picture of Neymarks on a boat with lots of money and at least one cat competition. I hope I win so bad. And here is one more. So all hilarious. Uh, Crimson Flatline, who I assume I follow here too. Uh, not sure. Anyways, uh, all hilarious AI artworks there of Santiago. We'll see who wins the contest. Look at these by Sky Goodman. This series on M props. This is actually, I have to say, one of the, I would say one of the most what I'd consider exciting and successful. Look at how well this is doing. Uh, from a, just a compositional, it kind of has this painterly feel. These Sky Goodman works made with M props. So pretty interesting. I would argue, uh, interesting, interesting. Uh, again, and you could, um, it's kind of back, you could use all this M-prop stuff and then you could use this as a source for a painting. But at the end of the day though, I mean, we were discussing this yesterday. The first thing you thought of when I first discovered AI is like, oh, I can use that as a source for a painting. But efficiency matters. And really maybe it's better as a digital work over a painting, but hard to say. There's a lot of, uh, this, there's a lot of uh, subtleties and different arguments you can make for different reasons. Look at Tukes, the great Tukes here. And frankly, this looks like exactly uh, like what's behind me here. This looks like almost a spitting image and then Calabria would be right here. Uh, so isn't that interesting uh, that the apartment is slightly different here. Look at how beautiful this is. So another fantastic uh, digital painting here, AI digital painting by Tukes. <laughs> Amazing. And here again is Danielle King, an open edition. And this uh, is referring, I believe, to the uh, Art Matter robot technology. So maybe this was painted. And this is part of uh, Artists as Muse series. And here we have a Lily Illo. I'm not sure if this one was painted or not. Uh, pretty interesting. Kind of looks like it uses M props, doesn't it? Not sure, though. Uh, tender art. Uh, so. Again, I think this may be uh, related to the Art Matter robot. Uh, so Hive Mind, cool title. And I was joking to myself, maybe Lorna Mills would like this one. You know, I, I thought this was an interesting just concept here of, right, so taking a digital thing and then rendering it, I believe this is probably an oil, using the impasto paint. This looks like an oil painting, but if, if we can zoom out here, uh, it was, hopefully this video isn't too long. You'll see that the canvas itself has been stretched out. There you go. So I thought just kind of interesting. I'd never seen anything like that. Let's share it here. Again, I'm going to ask Lorna Mills if she saw that. She probably won't see it. But if she does, maybe I'll send it to her beforehand on the space and ask her what she thinks of that. Uh, Mia Bergeron, painting from less than a year ago that found a great home. I think this is beautiful. This pool at night and gorgeously painted, brilliant color, great subject, very original. And even the palms over here, beautiful. And look at this, Donnie O'Donnell making a scarf. And so again, I love business art. And to me, this screams like, this is great. You know, I wanna see the imagination. I don't wanna see another necessary Louis Vuitton as I walk down the streets here. I wanna see like Donnie O'Donnell scarves. That is exciting. And that is your show, my friends. Thank you again for all the support. Thank you for joining me. Hope you have a great weekend. Till next time, Monday in a new location. Take care.